H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So, what I'm going to do is I will conduct a three-day class just to give you the basic idea about what Data Warehouse is all about, uh, what is Informatica, some of the basics of Informatica so that you have a look and feel about what the tool is all about. And then once you have that, then you probably it's better for you to take a decision that whether you want to really take this course or um, probably no, this is not what I want to learn, I want to learn something else. So it's up to you. But to take such a decision, uh, I feel that you should have enough information. So taking a demo doesn't give you enough information to take such decisions, right? So one last question before I start the course and I'll tell you how we will um, go in three days. But uh, one last question is uh, how many of you are actually new to IT? Okay, you have never worked on anything in IT or never got trained earlier in IT. So very new to IT. How many of you? Or maybe you are in some other area uh, and want to um, I want to learn something in IT and start your career. Okay, I see very few. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. So that's not a problem. Okay, don't 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 get scared. So this is not a problem. I just wanted to get a feel of how is my class, uh, the mix of the class. Okay, so that's fine. So uh, this is the complete course content. What we um, I see few hands on. I'll just. Put them all down. Okay. Now, what you see on the screen is the full course content, uh, which is around 24 to 26 hours course, right? And this course is very much good for someone who is looking either for ETL testing or for the Informatica developer role. It's it's basically uh, serves the purpose for both. Um, uh, before I start the course, let me tell you why is it so. The reason being is, just think about it. If I if I tell anyone that I know programming language, so the next question the uh, the uh, recruiter or the interviewer would ask me that what programming language do you know, right? If I say that okay, I'm a programmer, I know a programming language, he's going to ask me which programming language do you know? And if I tell him that, okay, you know what, uh, I don't know any programming language, but still I'm a programmer. So that doesn't make sense, right? So same, if you think uh, you want to go oh, into the job for a ETL tester role, then you have to know at least one ETL tool, um, not in depth, but at a very high level, at least by usage of the ETL tool. The reason being is the same thing. You go for an interview and tell them that, okay, I am a ETL tester and I have never worked on any of the ETL tool. They will just figure out, okay, this guy doesn't actually does not know what he's doing. Okay? So you have to know ETL tool. Now, Informatica is an ETL tool and we will learn Informatica. Uh, I see. Okay, my voice is breaking. Is it better now or is it still the same? Hello, is it better or still the same? Are you able to hear me? Oh, it's fine. Okay, maybe then, um, uh, okay, um, I see most of the people is fine, so maybe then it's a problem, I mean, you and, you know, so if you are using a computer a speaker, then probably the network, um, internet network bandwidth has a problem. No, sorry, no, 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 sorry, Kamini, Kamini Patel. So um, maybe that's a problem. So 
Uh, what I was telling is, yes, so this course, I, we will go through in details about the ETL tool in Formatica. And during the course, I will tell very specifically, okay, this much is required for ETL testing. And if you want to go beyond ETL testing, then these are the additional things you should know. So in the whole course, we will very clearly distinct I will actually very clearly distinct and tell like oh, how much is required for ETL testing and how much is for developers. That's one thing. Second thing is um, uh, I want to tell a little bit about the course before I actually start, start the course. Is um, This is the full course content which I'm going to send out to everyone after this class so that you have uh, an idea of what we are going to cover in the full course. Also what I do is usually every day before starting the class I, I pull out this document and mark them in green the areas which is covered. So that way by the end of the training we want to make sure that everything is covered which is committed. So I'm, I, I mark the uh, topics in yellow which I'm planning to cover maybe today or maybe next. Okay, and that's what I do. Yes, for the recorded session, and um, you will get the links to download the uh, 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 videos. Us, us for uh, for the regular class, uh, what I do is I, I send out the videos maybe after 15 minutes after the class. Usually, I send out the videos. But for this one, these are the three three sessions. So. You, I, I most likely I will not send out the video, so you have to get the. But I will be recording the sessions, so you have to get the videos from H2K. You have to uh, ask the videos from them, and they will send you the links. Okay, because they are controlling that. Now, uh, one other thing is, is uh, as I was telling, like we will be recording the um, session every day. We will record the class and then send out the videos every day in the regular class. And also regarding the software, we will install the software in your system. Okay, that's the full version of the software. It will be in your system. It will not expire. And you will use, um, but even after the class is over, uh, all the training is over, you can still use that software for your uh, practice, your hands-on assignments and everything. Um, I have, uh, during the class, usually I give out the assignments, that's, a, that's your hands-on part. But so you have to do the hands-on and um, if you have fixing problem, you have to let me know in the next class. And one last thing is the expectation from everyone who is attending the class is that you just listen to me and watch me doing the things during the class. Don't try to do the things parallel in your system. Okay, even though you have the software, you have everything, but don't do the things parallel with me in the in your system. The reason is you will will lose the focus, you will miss with the keywords, you will miss the concepts. So idea is you you watch me doing the things, try to understand the concepts, ask me questions while I'm doing the things, and then anyway you are getting the recordings. So oh, after the class is done, you get the recordings. Now you spend your time to do the hands on your in your system. Okay, okay. Now let's start the class. So what I'm going to cover today is I will try to give you an idea about what is the data warehouse, what is the need of data warehouse, maybe uh, well TP and okay, we'll talk about the well TP and OLAP also, and also the important part is the significance of an ETL tool. Why do we need an ETL tool at all? Okay, what is the significance? What are the different and, um, uh, usage of ETL tool? We'll see that. We'll learn that. And uh, and also uh, we'll see uh, how Informatica uh, is, um, because we'll learn Informatica, right? So, uh, and it is also ETL tool, so why Informatica is uh, better than others, right? Okay, so let's try understand what is a data warehouse concept. So. Usually what I do is I um, tell you a story, okay? So try to understand the story and then automatically you'll understand the purpose of data warehouse. <coughs> Think about it. So um, 
Uh, let's say uh, American Airlines. Okay, American Airlines uh, at the beginning of 2016, and uh, board members sit down and they decided that you know uh, what we have to target to increase is our profit maybe 20 millions. So what whatever we, we right now we make X million dollars profit and we are gonna increase it by another 20 millions for the 2016. That's our uh, vision for 2016, right? So what happens is so that's the um, like high, very high leadership team that that decides, right? Then comes the implementation and team who actually find, finds the strategy, designs the strategy, and try to implement the strategy to make that profit. Now, from strategy standpoint, what are the different ways we can increase the uh, increase the uh, profit of American Airlines? Right. So one way is is from most likely I will try to avoid try to start new services for American Airlines in for new um, uh, cities, right? Because that comes with a lot of of uh, extra additional cost, a lot of additional overhead, uh, a lot of additional expenses. So I want to avoid that. So what I'm going to do is uh, first thing is I'll avoid to open service or start new services for different cities. Rather, what I'll do is maybe I will start multiple services. Like I'll increase the uh, services between uh, cities. But I have to decide, again, what are the cities. Now, when I'm trying to increase the service, so what cities should I choose? Okay, if, And then also, the cities would be based on the uh, um, time of the year, right? So maybe what I'm trying, what does that mean is, if it's summer, then probably we'll we'll, we'll try to, we'll increase the flights for some regions in the north or northeast, right? And or maybe in the also like north overall north of the region because in summer most likely people go to these areas, and if it's winter, maybe in different other areas, maybe the south mostly then in the south. So uh, so what we have to find out is what are the different cities where I have to increase the flight. So that's one thing. The second thing is the pricing part. So even if I increase the flight, it's, it's I have to make sure I keep the pricing in such a way that people are provoked to buy this ticket. Also, there are many flights right now on, on, uh, flying where I see maybe the 30% seats are always empty. Okay, so how do I I do the pricing in a better way so that this thirty percent also gets occupied? So that's another thing. Also, while I'm doing the pricing, I have to make sure. Um, okay, that's one thing. Second thing is also, um, also there are a lot of, of travelers who are actually the business travelers who who fly on Monday Thursday. So they will fly in. Uh, they will fly anyway. Okay, doesn't matter which time of the year. Uh, because that's the job they will fly. So I have to identify them and make sure that at giving promotions and uh, lowering down the price and this shouldn't hit my that population because then it will again and hit my profit. So what I'm trying to tell you is is um, maybe and there are a lot of other strategies also which I have to keep in mind. So let's go one by one. So first one is increasing the flights between different cities. So now, now when I'm deciding that I have to increase the flights between different cities, first of all, if I break down the you know, year into four quarters, so and then I what I do is I make the target profit for each quarter. So most likely the summer and the last quarter would be the um, quarters where I would make more profit because summer is the time for holidays and people go a lot of vacation and and. Um, uh, because summer is like school holidays, that's what I'm saying. And for the winter, it's more of a holiday season, so people travel a lot, like for vacations. So now, uh, for for these two, particularly these two quarter, uh, again I have to narrow down which months I want. I'm talking about again which week of them uh, I'm talking about. Those things I have to narrow down, but. Uh, the most important thing is if I have to increase the flights, which city should I choose? So just think about it. 
uh, maybe if people used to go to New York in uh, in the winter earlier, but what happened? Or maybe people used to go to Florida in 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 December or November. But what happened is these days the whole the test has changed, the the pattern has changed, and people are going to ski sports in winter. <coughs> Earlier they don't want to go. They were not. Earlier they don't. They were not used to go to these areas earlier. But now people are going. A lot of crowd is going to the ski for ski sports. They are attracted to a ski sports. So, um, so that way we have to decide. And then also oh, 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 um, uh, we have to find out ten different and and um, uh, cities which are the destination cities for the vacation in summer and ten different destination vacation for the winter. And also, we have to find like, like let's say if I talk about the Florida, most likely if it is, is uh, which is maybe uh, uh, 15 to 20, 15 hours drive from Florida, will most likely drive. Maybe they will not fly. So I have to make sure that when I'm giving the offers or I'm, when, I'm, when I'm including the flights, which would be my I source cities. Okay, when I have already identified the destination city. So now. And then that's one part. Next, so this is by all about my selection of the cities. Now next, let's next come to the pricing part. So what would be my optimal price that people will still buy and I will still make profit? And then, and what are the flights where most of the times there is always a thirty percent and seats are not occupied? So when should I I give out the offers? Uh, so that this thirty percent in city is also occupied, and what should be that price, and when should I give out those offers? I shouldn't give maybe in the eleventh hour, right? So those things I have to see. The bottom line is is to do all this kind of analysis. What I need is I I need a historical data. I have to know how people have behaved in the last three years. That way I can. I, at least anticipate they will behave the same way or similar way in this year. Uh, how, what are the flights where the tickets were 30 percent not so loud? What is the different reasons? I have to do the analysis on my historical data, and based on that analysis, maybe I will take some decision, which maybe like most likely, if maybe 100 percent not possible, but maybe that will. Will be um, sixty or seventy percent correct. Okay, so that's the whole purpose. So that's the whole purpose of your or, um, uh, historical data. So that's why okay, people these days are not. I would not say these days, but <coughs> for the past few days, few, few for, for the past few years, people are very much keen to know about the historical data because that tells me a lot of about my. My customer pattern. If I'm dealing with customer, then it's customer pattern, customer behavior pattern, or anything. Like it, it basically gives me some pattern, right? Now, and all this data, right, comes from uh, is not currently is not um, this historical data is not not uh, in a single place, it's not a centralized place. Why? Just think about it. It when I'm talking about the American Airlines. What are the all different ways you can book a uh, American Airlines flight, right? So let's just think. One is I can go to orbit.com or any of the sites, right, and go and buy a ticket. I can go to the American Airlines buy the ticket. I can go to the uh, let's say an a to an agent, right, a travel agent. And I can buy a ticket, and then travel agent is using some other third-party software, not the Orbitz or Travel City. And then I can use my office travel software to book my trip ticket. And I can use maybe I can go to the airport and buy a just buy a ticket from um, the counter, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is there are in different ways of buying a ticket. For American Airlines, same flight, and maybe if uh, like 50 different people are buying tickets in 15 different ways. All these different systems are discrete. Okay, they are, are uh, they are, they are discrete systems. 
and all these different systems are collecting the same data, not same data, but same kind of data, right? And the data required, minimal information required to buy a ticket. So every all of these individual systems are capturing in those records. Now, when I am trying to do some kind of analysis, what I need is I need the data from all these different systems. So, and then what you have to understand is all these different systems are discrete and also build on different platforms. What does that mean is maybe American Airlines is running their uh, uh, whole whole ticketing system in SAP. Maybe a uh, Travel City is running in through some Java program or some build-in program, their own program. Your, your office is using some Salesforce tools and then somebody else is using some other, other software, right? So everyone is using different kinds of software, uh, basically different CRM software or travel software, and they're uh, uh, capturing the data, and their underlying database may be different. So similar kind of data which I need is sitting in, in, in my company, but not in a single place, all scattered, all different places, and all different forms of technology. Now what I want is I want to bring all this data from all these different places into a centralized location and, and I want to store it in the centralized location in such a, a way that at, in future if I want to run my analysis my, I can uh, run them very fast or very, very easily. So that centralized piece is called your data warehouse. Okay, so while you bring in the data from different systems and store the data in the simple place and, and um, you can run your analysis here. So that's your data warehouse. So that's the need and use of a data warehouse. Now to bring the data from all these different systems to your data warehouse you need something, right? Either you are writing some script, script, scripting language to read data from all these different sources and then do the transformations and then load the data into your data warehouse. So that's what is your e tool. So what Informatica did is Informatica came up with a tool. So instead of writing the scripts, what you can do is you can now use the tool. It's a, it's a, a drag and drop tool. It's a visual GUI tool. It's mostly drag and drop. So it's, it's saying that you use the tool to do your ETL. The tool will do all the, uh, all the processing thing uh, underneath. You don't have to worry about the processing. You just use the tool, instruct the tool what to do and it will do for you. Okay? So that's what your ETL tool. So ETL tool basically is a tool which has the capability to connect any system to read the data and again the vice versa connect any system to write the data. So that's your ETL tool. ETL stands for Extract, Transform, Load. So it extracts data from multiple sources, multiple systems, and then transform the data as per the requirement, as per the business requirements, and then load the data into a centralized location which is called Data Warehouse or Data Mart. Okay, now any questions so far? Anyone, any questions? If you have a question, raise your hand, I'll unmute you. Okay, Ramya, hold on. Ramya, do you have a question? Uh, since I'm new to testing, I feel it difficult to uh, understand uh, what you're saying. Okay, and now which part is difficult? Uh, oh, yeah. have, you, have you attended the session from the beginning or you just joined now? No, I am attending for the past 15 minutes. Okay, so... Uh, which part you are uh, finding difficult? No, it's not like uh, you just uh, say in words. So if we get something in video, like it will no, no, be useful for us. No, we will. Okay, Ramya, we will have three days session. Okay. So okay. until unless I give you the concepts, it's of no use of showing you that too. Oh yeah, then okay. Uh, yeah. So today is. Uh, I'm uh, today. I'll just try to build the concept for everyone. So that tomorrow when we start using the tool, you you understand what we are doing. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I see some more questions. I see a question from Santosh. 
are there any other ET, uh, other tools for ETL apart from Informatica? Yes, there are other ETL, ETL tools. So there are tools like Data Stage. There is Abinitio. There is Pentaho. There are quite a, like not a whole lot, but okay, five six ETL tools are there in the market. And Informatica is uh, why uh, um, like. Um, uh, uh, why is the advantage of learning Informatica is because uh, right now almost 55 to 60 percent people who are using any ETL tool, so 50, uh, like, okay, uh, if I take the complete state, it, out of that at 55 to 65, 55 to 60 percent of people are using Informatica. So the uh, chance of getting a job in Informatica is higher because of a lot of other reasons. And that's why people are using Informatica. So if you want to learn something, it's good to learn something which, which will give you a job faster. Um, I see a question from Bindu. Do I need to know Java or any other programming language or to work as an ETL developer? No, you do not have to know any programming language, but you have to know the basics of SQL, which I will be covering anyway. So. Um, no, there's there's no at all no programming. It's all drag and drop. You come to know tomorrow when we will actually have uh, like we'll, we'll work on that tool itself. Then you'll come to know. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ravi has a question, and that uh, is it's useful for the healthcare. Okay. Any industry. Okay. Any industry you take. Uses in uh, uses uh, any uh, like e in, um, ETL tool. Okay, it doesn't end matter which industry you talk about. Um, uh, hold on, I, I got I got some more questions. Uh, Rupali has a question. Unix shell scripting. We need to know right. Um, okay, Unix shell scripting also actually um, very basics of shell scripting is required, which I'll be covering in this course. So, but in detail, shell scripting not required. No, very basics. Mm. Um, then there is a question: What is the difference between Informatic and SSI? SSI is which one is good in the current industry? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, Bindu. Too. So SSI is basically a product of Microsoft, okay, and Informatica is a product of Informatica Corporation. Now, very basic difference between the SSI and Informatica is first of all, Informatica has the capability of you handling huge, huge volume, which SSI do not have anyway. But the way SSI um, and the way Microsoft markets the SSI tool is. They don't go and sell the SSIS tool. Okay, what they do is they sell the complete BI package, business intelligence package, which comes with SQL Server SSIS, which is their ETL tool, then SSAS, which is the analytical tool, and SSRS, which is their reporting tool. So then what they go do is they try to sell the whole package. Okay, I hope that answers your question, right? Um, uh, Rupal, you have a question? Yeah, we'll be covering the basics of unit shell scripting. Uh, as part from our daily assignment, is there uh, going to be a live project work on experience, including in this training? No. Uh, so uh, I don't believe that anyone can give you a live project work, at least for inform uh, any of the ETL tool. If someone is telling you, uh, I, I would say don't believe it, OK? So what we'll do is, uh, I have built some assignments. I'll be giving out that assignments. I will be helping you to do the assignments. And I have seen in past, because I have built these assignments, keeping the real-time scenarios in mind. So I have seen people who can do these assignments by themselves. They are comfortable to go and start the job. So that's much I can tell you. OK, any other question? Ramya, do you want me to unmute you? I think, uh, okay. Uh, Sanjay has a question. Yeah, Sanjay, go ahead. I, I didn't pick the last thing. What you said was that once we do the assignments given by you, what was the, oh. after that, you said something. 
No, what I'm telling is I have created the assignments keeping the real time scenario in mind. So if you are comfortable able to do the assignments, and then you will be comfortable when you go to work. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other question before we go further? No. Okay. So um, uh, we will. Uh, we have. We'll just. Uh, we have covered this concept. I will. Just, I'll tell you about the OLAP and OLTP concept. And then from tomorrow we will have a look of the tool. Look and feel of the tool. Now let's understand OLTP and OLAP. So OLTP is stands for online transactional processing, and OLAP stands for or um, online analytical processing. Now, uh, even though it is online, but what you have to understand is as a customer, okay, what you do in your daily life, whatever you do, right? Any transaction you do, that comes under OLTP. You go to Walmart, pay your bills, that's OLTP. Uh, so, okay, when I'm saying OLTP, that means the, there, when, when you do any transaction, there is definitely a, 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 a software system which is supporting that transaction, right? So that system is called OLTP, right? So maybe if there is a uh, user interface screen where you are, so just think about it, you are doing a transaction in Walmart. So uh, um, there is some interactive screen for the, uh, for you as well as for the uh, person, right, who is uh, employed, who is doing the transaction. So that's, so that means there is underlying uh, software system who is actually doing this transaction. So that system is OLTP system, right. So similarly, if you go online, buy something from Amazon, that's a transaction. So any transaction you do, you go to, even if you go to, oh, um, let's say, Bank of America and um, uh, deposit some money, withdraw some money, that is even transaction. Even if you go to, to uh, um, uh, uh, let's say, even if you go to uh, Amazon.com and if you don't buy anything, you just browse the product, right? So that is also con, uh, considered as a transaction, and because e because each time you click on different products, that information is captured at the back end. So that is considered also as a transactional data. Okay. So these are all the examples of transactional data. Now, the the analysis which I was telling you, these are done on the top of your transactional data, right? So. If I if, I, if I take the example of the American and all these different systems through which you buy the tickets, those are all your transactional systems, right? Individual transactional systems by all different vendors. Now, uh, I want this data to run my analysis. So that means I have to bring the transactional data into my, my data mart or data warehouse and then I can build my analysis on top of it. So that is called your OLAP. OLAP is your system, system or maybe the uh, framework you can say. OLAP is a framework or environment where you are bringing all this transactional data. So for me here is the data warehouse <clears> or <throat> the data mart which I have built where I'm bringing all this data. That's your OLAP system. Okay. Any questions so far? Um, okay, that's a good question by Rupali. Is that um, is it necessary that every OLTP will hold daily transactions? Can it be weekly or every two days? It depends upon the business. Okay. So um, just think about it. Um, Mm, just think about it. So let's say I have uh, uh, I have a, uh, a online store which opens alternate uh, like where, where I sell alternate days, right? I'm just, just giving throwing an idea, right? So yeah, I have an online store which 
I, I give out good deals, but I don't sell every day. I just I sell in the alternate days of the week. So that means I, I capture alternate, uh, like my all the transactions happen in alternate days. So then, then my system will capture, uh, will have not will not have a daily data. It will have a alternate day data. So two days data. Like every every two days, I see a transaction. So it depends on the business. And if you have a proper business case, yes, possible that you are capturing in um, daily data. Um, you are, if you have a proper business case, possible that you are capturing uh, weekly data or monthly data. It's, it's completely depends upon. Even you, you possible that you are capturing hourly data, right? Um, uh, Ratna has a question. Ola bringing the transactional data means it's bringing the data from the source. Yes. So your source are all most likely all are transactional systems, right? So ETL tool will bring the data from OLTP system to your OLAP system. Does that answer your question, Ratna? Uh, Karan has a question. Is it correct to say that OLTP populates the uh, and the data warehouse and OLAP uses the data warehouse for analysis? Uh, you are partially, partially not because I think you got the concept, but your words are not correct. So basically, if the data warehouse is populated with OLTP data, okay, and data warehouse is and the business uh, and the reporting, this together is your OLAP system. I hope that answers your question, Karan. Uh, yeah, Rupali, you have a question. And so this daily data is stored, or means holds most of the recent data. Now, yes, in the, in the OLTP system, yes, it holds the recent data. But in the OLAP system, probably you no, know, depending upon uh, how I'm bringing the data. Maybe I'm running a batch process, which means that every night I'm extracting the data from the OLTP and loading my OLAP, OLAP system. Then I have all, every day I will have a one day live data. If I build a real time system, then probably I will have almost real time data with what OLTP system right now having. Does that answer your question, Ratna? Yeah, full form of OLAP is online and um, uh, analytical parsing. Okay, uh, Rupali, you have a question. Every day the old data wiped out and the stores was most recent transaction. No, no, no. Uh, oh, in, 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 in OLAP, we have to keep the history. So we cannot wipe out the data. Uh, so we just keep loading the data every day. Uh, in OLTP system, in, even in OLTP system, also no. You keep if if the uh, data now because uh, uh, in OLTP system also you keep the data, but there is a basic difference between the OLTP system and an OLAP system, right? The basic difference is basically in OLTP system you have all transactions, right? All the transactions in the granular level. But in the OLAP system, you have brought these transactions and you have built some, like the way the data is stored is not in the, mostly not in the granular form, but in more of an aggregate form. For example, just think about it. So in OLTP system, when you swipe your card, right, I go to our ATM and I swipe the card, immediately there is some process happening at the back end, which is going to my account and checking that at um, how much balance do I have and it tells me that whether I'm eligible to do withdraw the money or not, right? Now, this process has to be very fast. So when I'm swiping my card, immediately a process is running and it's going very fast as finding out maybe if like for Bank of Media, I don't know, so many, so many millions of customers, right? Out of so many millions of customers, it's able to find out my I uh, my uh, account raised so quickly and send me the balance. But in OLAP system, when you are, your data is in data warehouse, um, most likely nobody will ever write a query saying that okay, give me the uh, um, give me the balance for the month of January for 
John Smith. No, nobody cares about John Smith in the OLAP system. What, what I care is, okay, what was the total sales done by each Walmart store in each, um, not in each day, but each week location-wise and then give break down the sales into four, four different times ends of the day and give me each time wise. So that means it, it will tell me, okay, in Florida, such and such location, this Walmart has made and X dollars between in um, uh, 1 a.m. in the night till uh, 6 a.m. in the morning and then uh, Y amount from 6 a.m. to 12 noon and Z amount from noon to 8 p.m. I'm sorry, 6 p.m. and uh, and then M amount from um, um, 6 p.m. to midnight. And this is for all the different locations. So if you look at this data, it's more of an aggregated data, right? So that's what I want. I don't want the data at the row form. So and if I have to to get the data, the whole reason is why I'm keeping the data in an aggregated form so that when I run my queries, it's faster, right? I don't want to, to see a report where the data takes like one hour to populate the data because it is running those heavy queries at the back end with such like 100,000 million records. No. What I want to do is, uh, is I know what kind of uh, reports I want, so I cook the data behind the scene and make it ready for the reports and so the report can easily read the data and generate the reports. Does that answer your question? Um, I, I see our, another question is uh, the data stored or processed in the OLAP is stored in OLTP. Yeah, OLTP still stores the data, but it's in a very raw format. It's very in the granular format. So, uh, and maybe um, uh, the data are also, uh, a single system does not uh, contain all the data, right? all the different information. So I have to bring the data from all different information, join them, aggregate them, and then prepare some data which is more useful. Uh, Ratna, have a question. I'll just unmute Ratna. Yeah, Ratna, go ahead. No, I already answered. Yeah. I don't have any okay, questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, then I believe I have answered uh, all of your questions. So, do you have any other question for me? Anyone? Um, I see another question from Bindu. If I learn informatica, can I work on SSIS if I get a job in a company who uses SSIS? Okay. Uh, Usually what happens is if you know one ETL tool, it's very, very easy to learn another ETL tool. Now to be very honest with you, if you know, if you tell that I know it, uh, Informatica, most likely people will not hire you for the SSIS. The reason being is there are people who are trained in SSIS. Why should I hire someone who is trained in Informatica? But let's just think the other way. So you are already working in a company where they are using Informatica and then they decided or maybe there is another part of the company who is using SSIS for different other reasons. And then if people, you can easily, if you know Informatica, you can easily switch within the company from to different teams. So that shouldn't be a problem. I think that answers your question window, right? Uh, Ramya uh, has a question. So, OLTP is a granular type, and OLAP is uh, is for a store that is a collection. Um, OLTP is a granular type, and OLAP is um, it. Sometimes we keep some data in a granular format, but most of the times data is in an aggregated format. Uh, Mathu has a question. Uh, will the OLAP system return the data after doing the analysis process and return to OLTP? No, no, no. Um, so it's a one directional from OLTP to OLAP. OLAP does not send the data back to uh, OLTP. No. Uh, 
And if there is a very, very specific requirement, then probably we'll build something where we can process that in, within the OLTP, but we don't send the data back to OLTP. No, we don't do, do that ever. Okay, uh, okay, everyone. Uh, so I think I have answered most of your, uh, of your questions. And this is the basic concepts. Now, um, this is usually in the first class I take this piece because um, I want to build a concept what you are learning. And this concept is actually important in the uh, I'll come to you. And this, this portion is important in parallelly for both developers and testers. Thus, you should have the concepts what you are going to learn. Okay. Uh, Rupali, I will unmute you. Hold on for a minute. Okay. Uh, um, can I proceed? Yeah, Rupali, go ahead. Yeah. So if we say that OLTP is an online transaction processing system, let's take an example of a bank system, banking system. Mm -hmm. See, every day transaction we do that is stored in an OLTP, right? Every day that mm -hmm. um, savings yes. and uh, check-ins and everything. So when this all of the entire historical data is transferred, that is into o OLAP, right? Mm -hmm. So does this mean that OLTP will carry only the one, uh, let's suppose our business uh, stores only one day data. I mean, it captures daily transactions. So does this mean that OLTP will contain only one day data? Because if no, no, the no. OLTP will contain no. the entire month's data, then it will be an OLAP. Yeah, OLTP will contain, so OLTP will have a, a retention policy. So OLTP might contain the data, store the data for maybe one year. Okay, all your last one year's transaction you can is stored in the OLTP. With, okay. along with along with the date, I mean insert date. Everything, uh, everything, date. whatever is capturing in today, everything intact. The data is there in your OLTP system for one year. In After that, they are archiving this data. They, are, they don't delete the data. Nobody deletes the data. Okay, they will archive this data and move it from the OLTP system. Oh, okay, okay. So in a sense, they are also acting kind of OLAP, right? No? Right there? No, 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 no. There. The part, you have, you, what you have to understand is the purpose, okay? So the mm -hmm. purpose of OLTP is different. So OLTP is more of a customer facing. So what you do is you, is you are interacting with the OLTP system. So that's where the data is captured. Now OLAP is more of a business facing. So OLAP will generate report, uh, reports for the business. So you will not see a report saying that, okay, how much uh, sales uh, uh, Walmart has done in which location and which day. No, you will not get that report, right? That business will get that report. So, OL, for, so if I'm working in a OLTP system, so let's say I'm Java programmer and I'm working in the OLTP system, so uh, basically I'm trying to build a system which will interact with customers. And my customers are actually, my clients are actually my customers, okay? So uh, anyone who has a, an account in Bank of America is my customer, and I will try to build a UI, which is more user-friendly for the customer. But think about the OLAP. OLAP, my customers are the business stakeholders. Okay, maybe the VP of sales. He wants a report. Right, right. Getting my point? Right, because any time a customer can come and they can say that uh, show me the, my savings or anything of past month, so then that time they will not go to OLAP. They can just uh, see it in the OLTP. Yes. But for yes. the business so perspective, that's a small, yeah. So that's yeah. a small, small data set that they can OLAP, yeah. OLTP can take care of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I see a few more questions. Mm, uh, Santosh, are you everyone will get get my email ID when uh, after this um, after this um, uh, session, I will send out an email with the complete course content. So anyway, you have my email ID. I think. <laughs> Bindu, you have a question. And OLTP is just uh, hands and legs. Without the brain, OLAP is a full body. Doesn't entail to okay. <laughs> okay, you can interpret different way, but it's just simple. Okay, it's just simple. That's uh, I would say just uh, um, listen to this recording one more time. You will understand, and otherwise we can discuss again tomorrow. Um, Karan has a question. Does an ETL tool work on both of the OLTP and OLAP? Actually, this is a very good question because 
you can use a ETL tool in multiple ways. So it's not only that you use for to load data into OLAP, but let's say I am migrating from um, a mainframe to other system. Okay, just a migration project. You you need a ETL tool. Okay, so yes, that kind of uh, there, there are that kind of situations also you will use ETL. But pure OLTP system, most likely no. You will not use any ETL tool. Okay, uh, anyone else have any other question? I see Matu has a question. Where's his hand? Okay. Matu, do you have a question? I have unmuted you, Matu. Uh, no, I'm fine. It was already answered. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, and uh, then I'm hoping that I have answered all of your questions. And I will end the session for today. We'll meet again tomorrow, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern. And tomorrow we'll start looking into the you know, tools. We'll have a look and feel of the tool. Okay. Have a good night, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye. And expect an email from me with the course content. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.